This is the Google Pixel 6 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and click on notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. If you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to heat up the front of the phone where the screen is so we can loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we'll need to use some sort of a suction cup tool to help us gain leverage between the screen and the frame of the phone so we can place our plastic pry tool in between and run it along the edges to pry the screen off. Once the screen is free from the frame, lift it up from the right to the left, but be careful since the cable for the screen is still attached to the main board. There's a metal bracket here covering the connector for the screen, which needs to be lifted up and removed. And there's a latch on the side, so we're going to have to bypass that by pulling away from the frame. Now the screen cable can be disconnected. The in-screen fingerprint reader is located here, and it is adhered to the screen. So if you needed to replace this, you would have to disconnect the cable over here by lifting up the latch and pulling that cable out. And then you would have to heat up this area and pry this portion off. Now I'm not sure if replacement screens will come with this fingerprint reader pre-installed, but I would hope so since replacing this part might be a little bit difficult, since you'll have to re-adhere this part back to the screen. There's also a cutout on the top portion of the screen for the proximity sensor. Here's a better look at that cutout. There are also five clips on the plastic border, which is attached to the screen, and those clips help hold the screen down more securely. Aside from those clips, the adhesive around the screen is pretty strong, so prying the screen off was really difficult and took a lot of time to make sure not to damage it. There's graphene film here, here, and here, and the graphene film helped transfer heat. Once the graphene film is peeled off, there are nine T4 or Torx 4 screws which need to be removed. Now the mid plate can be removed. Here's a better look at the mid plate. The haptic feedback or linear vibrator motor is located on the back of the mid plate. Next, before we continue, the battery cable needs to be disconnected. Now the camera cables can be disconnected. There are two T4 screws holding down the camera assembly, which need to be removed. Now the camera assembly can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at that. So to remove the battery, there's a pull tab provided to help us pry the battery off. That didn't really work. So this pull tab easily slides out, so we're going to have to actually use some isopropyl alcohol and get some around the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the battery. There's one more flex cable we need to disconnect. And then there are five T4 screws we need to remove on the bottom speaker assembly. Now the speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at that. And there's a mesh filter over the speaker opening. At this point, there's one more T4 screw on the top of the board which needs to be removed. Once that's removed, we can lift up and remove the main board. Taking a better look at the main board, the proximity sensor is located on top. There's some graphene film over the shields. The SIM card reader is located here. And the charger port is located on the bottom with a rubber gasket around it. Now one thing I don't like about this design is the charger port is soldered onto the board. So if that were to get damaged, it would be difficult to replace. And next to that is a primary microphone. Once the graphene film is peeled back, we can see a thermal pad on top of the processor. Here's a look at the back side of the board. There's a single T4 screw holding down the top earpiece speaker. Once the screw is removed, we can lift up and remove the earpiece speaker. Here's a better look at that. There's a rubber gasket around the opening. The LED flash board is located underneath and this flex cable connects that flash board to the main board. There's also a secondary microphone on this board and a third microphone on top, which is connected by this flex cable. On the top right side, there's a placeholder for where the millimeter wave antenna would go. And there's one T4 screw holding down that placeholder. Once the graphene film on the back is peeled back, 
It reveals where the wireless charging coil is as well as the NFC antenna. There's a square cutout in the metal frame over here and the connector is over here. This flex cable also connects the volume keys and power button to the main board. So if you want to replace those, you just have to pull up on this metal bracket and remove that and then you'll be able to push in the keys and remove them. Now the glass camera lens cover as well as the glass pieces on the back are held down with adhesive so if you want to replace those or remove those, you'd have to heat them up and pry them off. As far as repairability goes, I give this phone a 6 out of 10. There is strong adhesive holding the screen down, but aside from that, screen replacements shouldn't be too difficult. However, there is more work to take apart the rest of the phone, and the fact that the charger port soldered onto the main board, that will make charger port replacements difficult. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, reapply your screen. And then power on the phone and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next video.